Ara Valley CWA ladies have been very generous in their time and help and cakes. So there's just so many people. Noel uh, filming all this for us and just so many people who've been involved. So thank you for coming along, inspiring the artists who've presented their work as well as uh, encouraging, just being encouraged yourselves that perhaps next year you'll put something in. And, um, and it's also a major fundraiser for the Glen Ray Museum. Now, tonight, before we get on to the prize winning uh, people, we're going to have a very special book launch. Now, this book was, was put together because of the inspiration of Zeti Carton. Now, Zeti, for many, many years, I would bring groups of school children down for Zeti to tell the story of how she and her family were rescued from the big flood. That was in 1950, Glen Ray was well and truly inundated and Zeti ended up in the roof of her house. So to find out the whole story, you're going to hear it as a, in a poetic form in a moment, but there's also more information in a booklet that we of the museum have put together of Zeti's story and other stories. Unfortunately, there weren't too many cameras around in those days and while they were stuck in the roof of the house, there was no way they were going to have a camera anyhow. So it required some drawings to be done using Zeti's information to try and make it look like it happened. And the man, the first man who rode out through that flood waters to Zeti's home was um, an indigenous man who was working here in the village on the railways and his name was Jimmy Fisher. And we have a beautiful portrait of Jim over there that was painted by a local lady called Lynn, I've just gone out of my head, Whitmore. Lynn Whitmore, that's it, Lynn Whitmore. And um, we've been loaned that painting, that portrait by the family. But before I say any more, oh, the book, first I better say that. The Nenge books, that's Mike Jelliffe, he's based down in Karamba, he's actually put that book together because it's one thing to have Zeti stories and for me to have some mad ideas with some drawings, but what do you do with all that information? And Mike has very put it together very, very well and they're selling for $20 and that has Zeti story plus other stories. But the man who wrote the ballad to go with Zeti's story is here with us tonight and his name is Charles Dunn or Charlie and Charlie just loves writing poetry. So he's going to recite the poem that he wrote for us that we put in the book. So I'll hand it over to Charlie. <laughs> Ballad of the Flood. Three days solid rain came down. The Arara River flowed by Glenray Town. On June the 29th, 1950, a mighty storm hit and the river rose quickly. Constable Cornford, with two young blokes, rose the alarm and helped farming folks, moving cattle and stock to ground that was higher. On people's safety, they did inquire. After helping the Darwin family, they were invited in for a cup of tea. Eight people in all, from young to old, sat by the lounge room fire to ward off the cold. Zetty and her mother to the kitchen did go, when to their horror, water did show. It was coming in through the door as the river rose and the rain did pour. The constable made a hasty decision as the river banks burst and the water had risen. Open the doors and windows, let the water through. Then up to the ceiling went all the crew. Now getting all to the ceiling above took a, took a lot of push and shove. Two elderly aunts went up too, as gently as a man could do. Dresses and petticoats they did wear. Discretion was needed to lift this old pair. This sight would make one snicker, trying to cover petticoat and knicker. <laughs> 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 Now, Zeddy remembered a birthday cake, so into the attic for food did take. Blankets and bedding went up as well. How long they would be there, no one could tell. They removed some tin in the early light. What they saw was a scary sight. Water everywhere as far as the eye could see, swallowing land, house and tree. They saw a man on the railway track and made it clear Eight of us are all here. 
So all so as they waited for help to come, all ate the cake to the very last crumb. A rowboat owned by one Ned Chapman was taken through the pouring rain. To the river's edge they heaved and lifted as the floodwaters swirled and shifted. To save these souls who would row through the raging torrents twist and flow, the only one to raise his hand was Jimmy Fisher, an Aboriginal man. As Jimmy pushed out from, from the shore, with all his strength he manoeuvred each oar. He arrived at 10am at the Darwins and called in a tone, knocking the roof and called, is there anyone home? When they saw his face, hope was detected. From death to life, like Christ resurrected. Jimmy had some rum for all to share. He was there to save and there to care. When Constable Crawford showed his face, the rum was hidden at a very quick pace. As Aboriginals were not allowed to drink, and this could land Jimmy in the clink. The older women were first to board. Jimmy, for Jimmy, their safety was assured. He rode them all to the waiting crowd, but Jimmy was spent and his head was bowed. Exhausted from this mammoth task, to have a rest was all he asked. He was given the rum to drink and keep and recovered after a good long sleep. Jimmy became a favourite son. In Glenray, he was a number one. To go to the pub, permission was given. A just reward, now his life was left living. So that is the story of a man that was black, saving eight people from flood to track. An Aboriginal Indigenous to this great land, Jimmy Fisher, a much respected Glen Ray man. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Only Charlie can write a poem like that. He is very quick off the mark. Um, I'd like to call up our Deputy Mayor, Greg Clancy, if you'd like to come on up, Greg. Thank you. I've got to get down for this, I think. <laughs> How can you follow that? You know, it's a, it's a hard act to follow. But look, yeah, I'm, I won't say too much. Politicians talk too much. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. I usually take it out. The only problem is I'll probably start singing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what song do you want? <laughs> well, I'm actually will be at the Country Music Club on Sunday, and I'll be singing and playing drums. But that's another that's another day. Um, look, as deputy mayor and as a councillor, um, the thing I really love about my job, it's only a part-time job by the way, people ring me all the time and expect me to, they think I'm mandrake, they think I can snap the fingers and sort out all the problems, I do what I can. But what I really love is getting out to the small villages, Dundurban uh, and Glen Ray in particular because look at, look at all the people that are here today. We've had a few meetings here and there's always a lot of interest and it's, the community spirit is just so good. That's what I love about Glen Ray. And you're almost out of our area too, so it does take a bit of travel to get down here. Probably not. <laughs> but I, I would also like to say that I, can, I get blown away by the quality of, of the artworks, but not only the quality, the enthusiasm behind it and the diversity. I mean, there's so much diversity here. I mean, I've got to be careful because my taste in art's a bit limited because I'm a scientist and I look at things and go, oh, that, that, that bill's not quite long enough or that feather's not in the right place. So I've got to be a bit careful because art, art is art and I understand there's a bit of artistic licence in a lot of things. So I've got to be a bit careful and I, I did open an exhibition at the Grafton Regional Gallery one time and I made a few comments so I've got to be a bit careful because after it, the, uh, a local potter came up to me and he, he said, Greg, you're a cultural cretin. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to be commenting on the art tonight other than to say there's a, a good mixture, it's colourful, 
Uh, and I do love quite a lot of it. And congratulations to everyone who's done, done the artwork. Uh, it's in so many forms as well. It's not just paintings. And also, I got roused on when I arrived tonight because I was supposed to enter a sketch in the art con contest and I didn't receive the application form to do it. So maybe next year. I've got a nice little sketch I did of a whiptail wallaby. So I'm an ecologist. That's my passion. And I, last year, I don't know we got, whether we got any tonight, but there was some, a photograph of two brown snakes. And I really, that took my eye because I love snakes. But I can't see brown snakes, but crocodile. And also there's a really good sketch up the back. And I don't want to pick out any. This one just caught my eye for a good reason, because it's a cassowary. And at the end of this month, Val and I were heading back up to Cape York, home of the cassowary and the crocodiles. So it's great. And it's good to see that the mixture here. It's good to see everyone attending. And we even had a special suit made for us. Isn't that great? They really look after us. So thank you, so thank you for all the organisers. And, uh, and congratulations to all the winners. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. That's great. And uh, if you can stay here, we're going to announce all the prize winners. I'm going to start with the schools. OK, I'll hold it up closer. And these schools come from um, six of the Arara Valley primary schools. So there's quite a lot who won't be here tonight. But if you hear your name mentioned um, from your school, please come on up. I'm going to start with kindergarten, first prize. Oh, I'll tell you the theme for the children was called My Best Friend, and they tackled it in many, many different ways. And, um, and so you'll see the, the different ways of, of people thought of, children thought of their uh, My Best Friend. Okay, first prize in kindergarten goes to the Glen Ray School. Do we have Gabby Roberts here? Nope. I'll go through fairly quickly, but if... Oh, oh, okay. We might have got the dots mixed up. Okay, second prize from, this says Glen Ray School, and this is Sammy from kindergarten. No? Oh, right. Okay, we are really doing well, aren't we? The first two when we've got them wrong. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, year one, first prize goes to Grace Loudon from Glen Ray School. No, oh, oh, oh. We, we have really mixed up the dots, haven't we? Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> we have Daniel Cooper Scott, year one from Glen Ray School. Yes, we have a Glen Ray! Woo! Is he here? Is he here? He's not here. We finally, we have a Glen Ray. Okay, they've all got Glen Ray written on the top. No, you know what's happening. I am reading Glen Ray, Cedar and Steam, and the school, it hasn't got the school written there. No. Oh. Oh. Right. Okay, we've really messed it up. Okay, I'll just quickly go through the names. If you hear your name, come on up. Okay. Uh, second prize in year two goes to Alex McMullen. No. Oh. Um, he's Glen Ray. Oh, right, we have a Glen Ray. Okay. We have uh, year two, first prize goes to Cooper. Uh, Will Fennick is first prize in year three. Uh, Shay, S-H-A-I, in year three, has second prize. Year four, Billy has first prize. And Ruby Petit, Petit? Now, she was here today. She found her work and she was very proud of that. So she has a second prize. Uh, year five is Hannah Silver. She has a first prize in year five. And Lily Fennick has year five a second prize. Then we go on to year six is Laura Walker. She has uh, first prize. And in year six, second prize is Ashley Bargan. Okay, so we will need to find out what schools are all from. Oh, right. Let's see if we can do better with the, the other money. <laughs> okay, if you do, are called up, would you please come on up I'll give you the, I'll pass this over to Greg and then shake his hand and stay up here on the stage with, uh, with Seti, please, and Wilma. 
Okay, photography. First prize in photography. Yes, first prize is Brody Messina. Now, Brody is here. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> and Brody did that amazing photo of the golden dog at night. It's uh, very, very clear. The judge was very impressed with that and said, if she was, if that was just in the overall competition, it would have won first against all the adult photos, Brody. And second prize, this little one's not here, Lacey Bienefeld. Photography for the adults, we have first prize goes to Kerry Fay. No, I know Kerry's here. in the photography for the open section goes to Kirsten Bienefeld and she's not here. We go on to the paintings. First place for the children uh, is goes to Thomas Beedman. Is Thomas here? No. And second prize, I know this little fellow's not here, he's only four and he painted those galahs up the back and I'm his grandmother and, um, <laughs> uh, and his name is Marlon Bienefeld so he's not here. Uh, in the uh, painting, the open painting section, first prize goes to Daphne Morn. Now, is Daphne here? No. Okay. And second place in the painting goes to John Tweedale. John's not here? No. This is the problem when you live at Glen Ray. People don't know how to go over Red Hill. They think they've just gone to the Tablelands, I think, when they cross Red Hill or come down the road. In the uh, second place, no, first place in the drawing in the children's section is Shepherd Frost. No? Is Shepherd here? No? No? Not here. But I know this little girl's here. Second place in the drawing goes to Lily Cooper. Come on up, Lily. <laughs> While Lily's coming, I'll just tell you we have a a very, very kind uh, and very wise drawing judge. And he's been coming for many, many years. And he comes out, pays his own petrol, gets some of Bill's lovely scones, and that's all he gets for all these efforts. But he always then digs into his pocket and he gives a lot of judges encouragement awards. And this is one, this one here goes to Sienna Howard. There's Sienna here. <laughs> No, she is a Glen Ray girl. Um, and, whoops, I'll just find the rest of the... Um, oh, yes, now I'll go on. That was the children's one. Okay, first place. I know this one's here. Katie McAuliffe in the drawing for an amazing... <laughs> so if you have a chance to have a look at Katie's painting... It, I, she didn't have a title for it, so I called it Fishmonger. I didn't know what to say because she didn't tell me a title. But if you look on the face of the, the girl, the woman, and the face of the fish, um, you'll see a very similar pose and facial features. And I, I'm sure it was all deliberate, but it really blew the judge away, that one. And second place goes to Evinny Brown. She's from Coffs Harbour, but doesn't usually come out at night, but is a very good contributor to the whole of our um, artwork here. Now, one of the judges' um, um, encouragement awards in the drawing section goes to Muriel Smallwood, who doesn't like to drive over Red Hill at night, but that's not to be worried about because she is over 80 at least. So she did very well. But we do have another special judges' award to Shanae Haywood. And I know Shanae is here. Come on up, Shanae. <laughs> Well done. And if you want any pyrography, that's what you call it, isn't it? Pyrography? Yes. That's that uh, drawing with a wood-burning tool. If you want anything done, this is the girl to come and see because she does the most incredible work. She has a, oh, what would it be, some sort of a, a bull Brahmin. over there. A Brahmin over there. 
and I've seen one of her dogs, and it's oh, even better. Um, but so well done, Sinead. Now, we have another Judges Encouragement Award is to Mrs. Alwyn Downey. And I don't think Alwyn's here. And this, is she here? Oh, come on up. Now I know. They slipped all their entries in last Saturday and I didn't always see who was who. So I missed meeting this lady. So congratulations, Alwyn. And this is another lady who, I, I don't think Lois is here, another Judges Encouragement Award. And she is an amazing lady, a, a little lady who comes to, with her car filled to the brim with all the artwork and she's really motivated the Grafton Art Group uh, to get involved and they put in the most incredible work. So we're very, very thankful to have Lois in this area and being such a motivator. Now, we go on to the fibre section. First prize goes to Layla Bennington in the youth. And Layla's here. Here she is. We've seen Layla's work go and grow over the years. I think she's entered nearly, not quite every one of our art exhibitions, but a lot of them. And it's just interesting every year to see what has she done this year because it's really different and it's really a very wide-ranging techniques. Thank you. Now, Eva Maylard, is Eva here? Oh, she is. Here we are. Eva. <laughs> Eva has second place in fibre. Well done, Eva. Okay. And now, Judith, has Judith made it across? She had to sell the raffle tickets at the pub. Oh, come on, Judith, come on up. Okay, <laughs> Judith has a, uh, a, an equal first place. And while she's coming up, if Barbara Roberts could come up as well, because the judges just could not decide between these two ladies' amazing work. So they asked if they could split the prize. So it meant they had to split the money as well. But we said, look, it's the uh, recognition, the acknowledgement of, uh, and that's for Barbara, uh, of their high standard of fibre work. And second place goes to uh, Danka Jankalova. Is Danka here? No, she's from Sawtell. She has done the macrame. She did an apron and she did a lovely wall hanging over there too. Now, we go on to sculpture. Whoop, I'll go to first. In the youth, I know this lad's here, Lennox Kemsley. He has first place. This is a boy who milks the cows before he catches the bus at 10 past seven out of Glen Ray. So a boy, he is, he made the uh, school of fish. Yes, and he loves it. And second place in the sculpture goes to Layla Bennington, and Layla's already up here. Here we are. First place in sculpture, we've already mentioned her name in another section, and that's Muriel Smallwood, and she's an older lady from Glen Ray. And second place in the sculpture uh, is to Jan Homer, and Jan is up at Gulmarad, so she hasn't been able to come down. Now, we'll go on to the aprons. Now, this was our special section this year. It was just a crazy idea, and Bessie's put together an amazing historical display of aprons pinned up on the wall at the back. Bessie is 101 years of age, and most of those aprons came out of her glory box, her trousseau that her mother put together for her for when she married. So it's just incredible. Go and have a look at those aprons up the back. But first, first prize in the aprons for the children goes to Eva Maylard. And second place goes to Nazarene Van Annen. Come on up, Nazarene. And her apron, she called it Cookie Wookie. So have a look at that apron. First place in the uh, special apron section goes to Deborah McLennan. So come on up, Deborah. 
And Deborah is a very, very talented artist in many, many areas. And if you ever want to do any great classes, go to one of Deborah's classes up there in Grafton. It is well worth it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And the other one, the last one, the second place in the aprons goes to the Glen Ray Creative Group. Is there somebody here who would like to collect that on their behalf? Anybody from the Glen Ray Creative Group? Oh, there we are, Angela. Would you like to come on up? I'm going to get you all to move together, all around SETI. Thanks, Angela. Well done getting here with that on your nose. <laughs> I know. Just when we take the photo, just, you know, the, turn the face a bit. Yes. Now, if everybody would like to gather up together all around SETI, the shorter ones at the front, please, so we can take a photo. Uh, Nassie, come on, shorter ones at the front. We want to get a group photo. Come on, Angela. Here at SETI, I um, mean... Um, Nazi, stand here right next to Mrs. Carter, Mr. Zeki. Here, move in a bit. Move in a bit. Okay, we want to get a, a group photo of all of you. Now, can we see Shanae? She hasn't grown very much over the years. <laughs> no. Okay, Katie, can we see you? Can you get everybody in? Who would you like to move? Up? Judith? Okay, can you see everybody? Lynette? Lynette's our Glen Ray's roving photographer. Just tell me when you're ready. You haven't got a jellyfish hanging in the front of your photo, have you? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you to all the winners. Well done. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> and um, please spread the word about the exhibition. We're open tomorrow from 9 to 3. Let your friends know. So come on out because it takes us two and a half days to set this up and it takes us two and a half hours to take it down. So at three o'clock tomorrow, it's gone. So please come on out tomorrow, bring your friends or tell them that we're on and thank you very much for coming. And thank you, Grace.